Hello and welcome to Shelter 142 in Switzerland. This video will point out special considerations regarding the use of filter masks or gas masks when operating from a shelter. Part of good practice when using half or full masks involves keeping them clean and free of contamination in order to protect the user. Typically one starts out in a clean safe zone with a clean mask. The mask is put on in the clean uncontaminated zone, then one enters the contaminated or danger zone to do what needs to be done, afterwards one leaves the danger zone and the mask is taken off in the clean safe zone again. And then the mask can be cleaned and decontaminated and we are back to the starting point. When operating from a shelter, the shelter of course is the clean safe zone and note that most of the five points of handling the mask should therefore occur inside of the shelter. However, a fundamental problem arises in this case. As one leaves the danger zone to get back into the safe zone or the shelter, one will inevitably contaminate the interior of the shelter and the safe zone will turn more and more into a danger zone with each re-entry. A good way to avoid contamination of the shelter would be to have an airlock, but most private shelters will not have one, as they are quite expensive and difficult to build. It follows that shelters without airlock they will be contaminated if entered and exited repeatedly by inhabitants under conditions involving nuclear, biological or chemical contamination of the outside world. For this reason, shelters without airlock are not suited for long-term use when the outside world is contaminated. Good practice using filter masks operating from a shelter will require preparations and procedures to first avoid contamination of the shelter interior, second be able to clean masks after use and third to keep masks clean by storing them in appropriate airtight containers. To avoid contamination of the shelter interior upon re-entry one could wear protective clothing such as Tyvek or similar for particles impermeable types, shoe covers and gloves. Cleaning of masks will require at least some clean water. Manufacturers recommend additives, these could be stored as well. Cleaning tissues could also help keeping masks clean. To prevent contamination of masks when storing them, airtight containers could be purchased along with the mask. This is the end of this presentation. I think a major take home message is that it does not suffice to just buy, have and train with masks. Procedures for their proper use should be thought out in advance too. Please don't forget to rate and comment this video and in order to stay up to date about preparations in Shelter 142, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and bye.